sideshow, the freak show, where the spider meets the monkey. Hi, I'm Steven Sink of uh, Pagan Productions and the Man the Bulber development crew. Uh, this is Geo the Cat who was interrupting the video. Uh, we're going to get you quickly started using Man the Bulber today in this Man the Bulber quick start video. <laughs> First thing we need to do is we need to install Mandibulber. Um, I recommend going to the um, SourceForge.net Projects Mandibulber site, which I will link to down below, and we'll click on Download. The file will be around, uh, well, I don't know what it is, it's less than 100 megabytes these days. And um, 104 megabytes is the current version, and I'm using version 2.24. Click on that. We're going to more info run anyway because uh, my computer has never encountered the software before. I guarantee you it is safe. Um, yes, I accept the agreement. Next, create a desktop shortcut. Next, installing it. Um, you've installed software before. If this is your first software, then we're um, we have more issues. Um, the my PDF is open right now, so it won't uh, load that. Okay, we've downloaded Mandelbulber. Um, most of the times we will download Mandelbulber here at Program Files, uh, C Program Files Mandelbulber 2. Um, if you want to download it someplace differently, please remember where you installed it because we're going to need to know where we installed it later on to get uh, in just a little bit to use for the video card timeout delay change, which will be coming up here in just a second. Now, if you want to use your computer chip or your CPU to make fractals, uh, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, Mandelbulber will use all the cores they can find on your chip and use them at their maximum output. By default, all the cores will engage, but if you want to run Mandelbulber and still have some resources left over, see maximum number of cores to use in the program preferences under File and then under General tab. So um, I've loaded up uh, File, go to Program preferences general and here we can see uh, the maximum number of cores uh, maximum number of CP cores to use which uh, my uh, chip has 64 and we're gonna uh, I have a high priority you can leave this alone not touch it at all most of the time um, you can change the rendering rendering threads priority change the number of cores or you can just leave the settings alone at default in most cases this is advanced see the full user manual now if you want to use your video card to make fractals for uh, um, using your GPU the graphics processor of your video card in a method called OpenCL which I highly recommend it's exponentially faster than CPU you want to go up to file click on program preferences and then um, we're going to enable OpenCL. So File, Program Preferences. We'll go to OpenCL, your um, GPU here. And we'll see, uh, I already have OpenCL turned on. You would click this box. You would select uh, whatever's showing here, um, either NVIDIA or uh, AMD. And then you would select the video card. The quick start guide says select your platform, either NVIDIA or AMD. You can select multiple devices and cards by dragging across them, and if you press the control key, you can click each one. Each active card will be highlighted, and then they'll combine together to render as one unit. They can be different models and series, but both the cards have to be either AMD cards or NVIDIA cards. Uh, click OK after you've done that. So, um, back here at our program preferences, which is open in this other pane here, um, I would have clicked this. And then I would have clicked here, and I want to click OK, and that would have selected my video card. Um, OK, and now I'm pretty much ready to go. Now, by default, up here in the right-hand corner, there's something called OpenCL Mode, which should be at full by default. Occasionally, it will be changed, and you just want to make sure that that is full. Uh, if you have it at no OpenCL, that will use your CPU, and then there's fast, medium, and full mode. Most of the time, you'll be on full mode. Let's do one more quick thing. We need to set up our video card timeout delay change. Now, real quickly, um, if we had just installed our um, Mandelbulber at the default location of your uh, C drive program files, Mandelbulber 2, you will see 
down here a file called TDR disable bat. If we right click on this file and we go up to run as administrator, say yes. And then it will, uh, Mandible over to Windows tools, to toggle timeout detection and recovery of window display driver model. None of that's important. Basically, it says value TDR level exist, overwrite, yes or no. I've actually done this already before, so I'm going to get this, uh, it exists. Um, but I will say yes, it does not hurt to uh, redo that. Operation completed successfully, reboot required. I don't have to reboot since I've already done this fix. Now, let's talk about why we had to do that. And um, I also will mention that I have that registry chain saved on my desktop and I just merely uh, click on my desktop, which is pretty messy for this tutorial. I already should have cleaned it up. I go to graphics timeout to 30 seconds, merge me. I just double click on that and hit yes. It asks me if I want to add this entry to my Windows and I click yes. Uh, I have a link to this registry entry uh, in the uh, below the video description. So uh, you can also, uh, as a video shows, find it on your C drive where Mandelbulber installed it right there, TDR disabled.bat. Okay, now why does this matter? By default, Windows sets up a timeout delay for video cards that's really short. Because when you're playing a games, uh, when you're playing games, more than a half second delay in thinking usually means you've crashed. Unlike in rendering, where uh, it can take more than a couple seconds to return a pixel, many 3D softwares besides Mandelbulber require this registry fix, and it won't hurt your game playing. Although, if you actually crash in game playing when you've done this fix, Windows will take longer to rescue you from it, which is the whole point of this operation. Uh, don't kill the video screen if it times out too long. So we've done that quick fix and believe me that fix would uh, uh, hurt you many times when you try to do a difficult render and Windows would think your video card had frozen when in fact it was just still thinking. Okay, you are ready to use your video card to render fractals. Um, let's take a look at Mandelbulber then at the different parts. Um, okay, now that we've set up Mandelbulber, let's take a look at it. Let's review the major sections of it. Um, looking at Mandelbulber stock view, we have up here at the top, um, in fact, I need to go Windows default view. There we go. Reset Windows to default. Uh, at the top, we have the toolbar, which contains uh, several default settings, and we can add settings to that just by pressing the plus bar. Here we have the navigation uh, pane. Here we have the main render window, which um, shows the rendering of the fractal, whatever we're doing at the moment. And over here we have various panes of uh, materials, effects, image adjustments, uh, rendering engine, objects, etc. Um, back here at the uh, quick start guide, which we can get to at any time in Mandelbulber, merely by either hitting Control F or going up here to help and hitting user manual, will pop open the user manual. At the beginning of it is the quick start guide, which we are doing now. Um, here you'll see the different parts of Mandelbulber, toolbar at the top, navigation pane here at the right, the main view window of whatever fractal is rendered, and then over here we have various sub-panes. We have effects, objects, image settings, rendering engine, material editor, and a few other things. Um, at the bottom we could also have the animation pane if we would wanted to, and we can select different windows by going up to windows and um, viewing different windows. Right now this is, this is the default view. Okay. Let's take a look at the uh, render, stop, undo, and redo buttons. Um, these are going to be very useful. Up here in the right corner of the navigation pane, we have render, stop, undo, and re uh, re redo. Render will simply render whatever is uh, in the memory or in the settings at the time. The default view and the default settings are this Mandelbulb and this scene. When you open up Mandelbulb uh, and hit render, this is what you will get. Um, we often hit render just to check the settings to make sure everything's working. Um, then you have the stop button, which stops uh, the rendering. You have the undo button, which undoes the last action and also re-renders the settings. So if I hit rend undo, it'll undo whatever change I, I made and then re-render the fractal. Redo will redo whatever change I made and redo the fractal. Right below that, we have auto refresh. Any change we make will automatically re-render the fractal in the view.
Uh, auto refresh automatically image uh, automatically renders the image whenever a change is made. Otherwise, the image will not render unless we either hit the render button or uh, the render animation bank uh, or the render animation button on the animation pane. Um, Next, let's look at set image size, which is image adjustment on the settings pane. The default size is 800 by 600, and that's quick to render, but it's pretty low resolution. We'll also select the connect fractal detail level with image resolution button uh, checkbox. We'll do that whenever we want to resize our fractal and we want the larger fractal to look the same. Otherwise, it's going to have a larger detail uh, with the larger size. So, um, the toolbar, go up to view and select show toolbar if it's not already showing. Now, by hitting our default uh, um, settings, we have the toolbar showing. Those are the default settings for the toolbar. Um, that's pretty much it. Once we have the toolbar showing, we can click on any of these toolbar shape thumbnails to load it and hit render in the navigation pane. If we click on that giant plus button, it'll save whatever current scene we have to the toolbar and add a thumbnail to the bar. So back at Mandelbober, if we were to click on this fractal and then hit render, we have that. I hit undo and it undoes the scene and returns me to the other fractal. I can hit redo and it will take me back there and render the fractal. Now let's say I um, have moved this camera and I moved the object and I want to save it. And now I have it saved with this new position. There is the old position saved. And then here's the new position saved. Oh, I have to hit render, sorry. Old position, render. Whereas if I have the auto refresh button on, I hit old button, I hit new button. And then I have to hit auto refresh again. Okay. Uh, move around the fr uh, fractal. We can move by clicking, as I just did there, uh, just to get a different view. Click on the fractal in the main view uh, to move closer to where you clicked. The higher the value of the step size in the navigation pane, the more you'll move towards where you clicked. If you get lost or stuck, reload the scene from the toolbar, from keyframes, which we haven't looked at yet, or save files, which we'll look at in a little bit, or hit the undo button, which we just looked at. Hitting reset view on the navigation moves camera away from the fractal if you get too close. So let's review all of that, what we just done. We can move the fractal around by grabbing a hold of it and dragging it. We can use these camera buttons and move around. We can, um, what else does it tell us to do? We can, um, ah, the higher the value of the step size, the closer we'll get to the fractal. So let's see, if I click on it just once, I'm gonna zoom in like that and let's hit undo. Whereas if I increase the step size, say to two, four even, there we go. That's a drastic change when I click on it. However, and we'll do undo to take us back. Um, we can also hit reset view to pull us away from the camera for too close. So we're going to zoom way into the fractal and then we'll hit reset view to pull back away from it. At any time, we can go back up here and hit one of these buttons and that'll take us back to where we were before. Okay. Use the navigation buttons to move in the navigation pane. Um, we have up, down, left, right, forward, and back, and we have rotate the camera, pitch up, down, raw, left, and right. We also have some keyboard shortcuts here, which um, are printed here, and we won't go through them all, but mo mostly you can use a lot of the left and right arrows in the W, S, and D keys to move around like you, like you normally would in other fractal software. So rehashing left and right, up and down on the view... And then actually rotating the camera, which uh, it's subtly different between what's different, moving back and forth the camera and moving the target back and forth. And um, navigation by mouse dragging. In most cases, the easiest way of moving and rotating the camera 
is dragging the fractal by holding the mouse button and moving the mouse pointer. Uh, if we hold the left mouse button, it rotates camera by moving target. We hold the right mouse button, it rotates circle around indicated point by moving camera and target. Middle button, so let's see. If we hold left button, it will move it back and forth. We hold right button, it will rotate around as we move it back and forth. If I hold the middle button, it will spin it as I move it back and forth. If I hold both buttons, it moves the entire thing as well as the camera. So left moves just the fractal back and forth. Right lets me drag the fractal along as C. If I click it right here and then right click it, it will spin right on that point that I set initially. Click here and it'll spin right on that point that I set. All right, right uh, left click to move the fractal. Then we hit the middle button to spin the fractal. We click on the fractal to get closer. We left click, I'm sorry, we left click to get closer to the fractal. We right click to get further away from the fractal. And then by far the most fun thing to do is control click. I just hold down the control button and I scroll with my mouse wheel and the view slowly gets closer to the area that I'm scrolling to. And this effect is accentuated by how much I have the step distance on. So let's turn it to step 0.5 and then we can really, we see we can just zoom wherever I point my mouse cursor and then control wheel. I control wheel forward, I control wheel backwards. This is probably the best way to simulate a flight animation style. Really cool. The click by navigation is by far the fastest and easiest and bestest way to move around a man over. You can play with these buttons. I, I usually look at these as fine tuning buttons and I will fine tune the steps, half, 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 half to get micro steps and just nudge, 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 nudge. Or sometimes just pick up and place exactly where I want and then maybe nudge just a tiny fraction to get it where I want. I can spin by using these buttons, but I can also spin by putting my mouse and using the middle button and dragging left and right with my mouse button. Navigation. Okay, let's get you using Mandelbulber. Um, real quickly, load, save, copy, and paste are extremely important, especially for learning um, as new beginners. Load example. We're going to go up to file, load example file load example the mandible is just chock full of amazing examples that have been done by uh, christoph marzak and the development crew and users over the years but mainly christoph has done most of them um here in the uh example load example folder that pops up by default we'll see a whole bunch of different settings a lot for the different uh, formulas and then we'll also see folders the user folders uh, Christoph Marzak is the inventor and uh, um, main programmer for Mandelbulber and he has quite a lot of views uh, quite a lot of example settings but uh, Graham McLaren also uh, who is the fractal formula guru has uh, an amazing amount of good examples I use his examples all the time um, I start with a Graham example and then just tweak, 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 tweak. Um, and then there's some uh, other folders in here as well uh, to load any of them. In fact, let's um, go back to the aforementioned Graham folder and we'll load this full uh, right here uh, called um, a box and I'm sorry, called a box cylinder and um, simply give it a spin hit render and here I've loaded up one of the examples from Graham Graham called a box uh, underscore cylinder and hit render and lo and behold I have an example to play with I can see what the um, material settings are I can see what the camera settings are I can go into all the several different panes and look and see what's going on 
what's the image size, what's the effects being used, what's uh, all this stuff, and learn. Just learn, oh, that, he used that setting. Oh, he used that setting. Oh, he left the camera pointed straight on instead of turning to the Or he left the lights turned to the sideways. Oh, he's using a green tent on his light, whatever. Open up those examples, play with them. All you have to do, again, file, load examples, and then just load one of the many examples. We're picking one at random. Open. Hit render. And wow, it's a fractal scene. And I can move it around. I can spin it. I can go click on it and start investigating. I can do all sorts of things. And this was a scene that just loaded by going to the examples. That alone is going to give you hours, if not years, if not decades of enjoyment and fun. Um, next, they would like us to do save and load settings. Okay, well, you've copied, um, you've loaded the examples, and uh, you also want to save your settings. Um, simply enough, uh, you know how to save settings like any program. We'll go File, Save Settings, and um, type in a name, and it'll save it someplace. Uh, by default, it wants to save it at Program Mandible Number 2 Examples, um, which we were just at. Uh, you're going to need to navigate to where you need it. Um, not to get too complicated, but at your user folder name, which in my case would be Pagan Zero. And if I go to my Mandible folder, I can go to Settings, and then that's where I save all of my settings. That's set up automatically when you load up uh, Mandible as well as it also creates uh, an image folder and some texture folders and other folders. These are the default folders that are saved on your user profile by Mandelbulb or when it installs, which, which is, is, is fine. Even if you do a standalone install, you're still going to have all these files here. And I usually save my settings here in this folder here. Uh, my name, Mandelbulb user folder settings. Um, occasionally, you'll come across uh, settings from other people who have generously uh, posted settings and uh, would like you to use them. All you have to do is just select them with the cursor, like so, right-click on them and copy, and then I'll automatically copy them into the Windows clipboard. And then here at Mandelbulber, we go to File, and we go load settings from clipboard which um load settings from clipboard and i hit render hey and that was the default mandible which i put in the uh, settings uh here in that example when you load from the clipboard it will replace any of the current settings that you had so back over here i can do undo and i go back to that scene that i just had uh, but if I do redo, it loads that scene that I loaded from the clipboard. Um, you can do the same thing, uh, provide your settings to somebody else on the forum. So I go to um, Manibulber, and this scene here, this time I'm going to do save settings to clipboard. Save settings to clipboard. Okay. And now, okay, let's go to a new uh, text document which we'll name sample fractal and paste in there. And then when we put cop, uh, then when I put control V, it pasted those settings, which we can reverse engineer that. We can copy that back into the clipboard and then put that back into the settings by loading settings from clipboard, the same settings that we just pasted from clipboard, hit render, and it's the exact same file. But um, we can copy and paste back and forth using the Windows clipboard and putting it into Mandelbulber. Very handy for obviously saving your settings. Uh, very handy, obviously, for sharing your settings uh, with different people and for learning. Um, if you're having issues or having troubles on the forum, uh, you'll be asked to, hey, uh, that weird thing that you're having, save your settings to the clipboard and paste them here and we'll take a look at it. Okay, the full user manual can be found, like I said, by going to control H and calling up, uh, um, or going to the help menu and calling up the full user manual. There's also a list of hotkeys in the help menu. 
Um, there's the Facebook forum. That's probably the most important place to go to for showing off your wonderful images, for learning about Mandelbulber, for asking questions, for just hanging out with really, really cool people and um, learning. Uh, we have weekly challenges. Um, it's just a really cool place. Um, one of the best sites, in my humble opinion, for fractals on Facebook. Um, you can find it at uh, facebook.com groups Mandelbulber. Um, there's also a variety of YouTube tutorials, which uh, I'll link to below uh, this tutorial. Um, I've done a lot. Chris Stuff's done a lot. Uh, various members have done a lot. Uh, maybe someday you'll do a tutorial and help somebody out on various topics. Um, when all else fails, RTFM is an old engineer saying, read the freaking manual, read the full manual in this case. And uh, I'm Steve, your, your editor of this manual. So um, if you have problems with this manual, please let me know and we'll make it better. Um, go forth and fractal. That's all you need to know. This was a quick start guide that was probably a little bit too long, but uh, that's the quick down and dirty. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can always uh, PM me at Facebook or just post your question to the general forum. Man of Bulber. Okay, when all else fails, read the manual. Go forth and fractal. Have fun. Welcome to the sideshow, the freak show. Where the spider meets the monkey Welcome to the stage The laboratory Say hello to Arachnus No!